वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स आफ्टर लर्निंग द पैरोटिड ग्लैंड विच इज ए सलाइवरी ग्लैंड द लार्जेस्ट सलाइवरी ग्लैंड लेट एस कम टू द सेकेंड सलाइवरी ग्लैंड एंड दिस सलाइवरी ग्लैंड इज कॉल्ड एज द सम मैंडिबुलर सलाइवरी ग्लैंड द क्वेश्चन इज डिस्क्राइब द सम मैंडिबुलर सलाइवरी ग्लैंड ओके अंडर द फॉलोइंग हैड्स ओके location of this this submandibular salivary gland which is in digastric triangle then what are the parts that means superficial and deep parts of the salivary gland relation of salivary gland which are many okay then the blood supply the nerve supply the lymphatic drainage and lastly we will learn about the applied anatomy of the salivary gland in the answer you can start writing like this this is a mixed salivary gland what do you mean by a mixed salivary gland it means it secretes both the type of the uh, secretion the mucus secretion which is thick and viscid secretion and a watery secretion what is called as the serous secretion because the salivary gland is a mixed salivary gland that means it has the both serous and mucus acini secreting cell there are serous demulene so both the kind of secretions are secreted by the salivary gland now if we see the location of this salivary gland it is located in the digastric triangle okay it is the digastric triangle which you can see here in this diagram this is these are the two angles of mandible this outline is the base of the mandible or the lower margin of the body of the mandible as well as ramus this two are the angles of the mandible okay and we are looking it from below that means from the submandibular area we are looking this is the body of the hide bone i have do not drawn the greater carnua but it is only the body and in the midline from the symphysis mantle of the mandible going right up to the midline of the body of the hide bone here you are seeing that this is a fibrous raphe what is called as the median raphe and to this median raphe and to the part of the body of the hyoid bone there is the attachment of this muscle whose fibers are directed downwards i mean say medially and that of the forwards in the anatomical position so these are the oblique fibers of a muscle and this muscle is the mylohyoid muscle okay i will just write down i think i should write down here this is the mylohyoid muscle okay a thin muscle at the floor of the mouth okay so this is the muscle of the floor of the mouth and in this relation okay at the posterior margin of this mylohyoid muscle you can see that superficial to mylohyoid it is the superficial part of the gland is situated then it's go round the margin or the posterior border of this mylohyoid muscle so a small part of the gland also lies superficial to i mean say on the under surface of the mylohyoid muscle okay so this is going deep to the mylohyoid and that is deep part so you have understood the location it is the location is the digastric triangle because here will be the anterior belly of digastric which will go through the sling okay where common tendon of digastric and here will be the posterior which will go towards the mastoid process deep to the angle of the mandible so anterior belly and posterior belly of digastrics are here so that this is the submandible i mean say digastric triangle it is the digastric so location of the gland is within the digastric triangle okay let us come to the parts as i have said that a large part of the gland is superficial that is on the under surface of the mylohyoid muscle in anatomical position and a small deeper part is superficial to the mylo that means on the surface okay superior surface of 
of the myelohyde muscle. So it is hidden behind these fibers of myelohyde. Hmm? The posterior margin of myelohyde is seen here and these two parts superficial and deep part they are continuous with each other round the free margin of the myelohyde muscle. Okay, they are continuous with each other round the free margin of this myelo. I have not drawn the myelohyde muscle on this side. Okay, okay. So this you have seen the part, a superficial part and a deep part. Let us see about more description about this superficial part. Now it is a V-shaped structure. Okay, and if we cut a section of this, okay, the this a coronal section passing through the superficial part of the so, uh, gland, the submandibular gland, then this its shape is a vase shape. Okay, its shape is that means there are three borders and three surfaces. Let us see the this uh, coronal section here. These are the molar tooth. Here is a molar tooth here, and then let me go just okay. You may zoom also if you are not seeing it properly, just zoom it. This is a molar teeth, this is the cross section of that of the mandible. Okay, this is the mandible. And then here on the, this is the lateral surface of the mandible which is covered by the skin and the superficial fascia. Then this on the under surface, here it is the skin and superficial fascia is here. This is the myelohyde line on which the myelohyde muscle is attached. And then there is a, I mean say, impression, some mandibular fossa is here on the medial surface hmm, of this mandibular body. Okay, some mandibular fossa. So a slight depression is seen here where the submandibular gland will come in relation. I have drawn this submandibular gland, the superficial part which is waist shaped has three borders and three surfaces away from the structures. Okay, they are very close. This is touching to the bone but I have drawn away from so that you can realize about its borders and surfaces. Now it is as I said the superficial part which we have seen here is a waist shaped structure and it is located between the body of the mandible. This cross section is through the body of the mandible and it is hmm, between the myelohyde muscle. Okay, So this wedge is between myelohyde muscle and that of the body of the mandible. Okay. Now, the deep cervical fascia, deep to the skin, this is superficial fascia and the deep cervical fascia as it will come close to the medial surface of the body of the mandible just before the gland, it will split into two layer. It will split into two layer to enclose the gland. The upper layer will attach to the myelohyde line just below and the lower to the base of the mandible or inferior border of the body of the mandible here in this diagram this is the base or the inferior border of the mandible and so that this deep cervical fascia okay deep fascia which is also called a general investing layer of deep fascia it will cover the gland it will cover the gland from both the surfaces okay on its both surfaces and third surface is in relation to that of the bone that is the body of the mandible okay now this Surfaces are the superficial part, okay, in the surfaces of the superficial part, they are three. Infrolateral, this surface is called as infrolateral surface, okay. Then the other surface is the medial surface, this surface. Oh, one which is facing towards the myelohyde muscle in cross section, this is the myelohyde muscle. One which is facing to the myelohyde is a medial surface. This is the this surface of the gland which is covered by the investing layer of deep fascia, its lower lamellae. Okay, this is infrolateral surface and the third surface which is close to that of the body of the mandible, it is the lateral surface, submandibular fossa. Okay, uh, so these are the three surfaces, a lateral surface, a medial surface and a infrolateral surface. These are the three surfaces of the superficial part. Okay, super. Now let us come to relation of this superficial part which is here. Let us see the what are the relation of this superficial part of the submandibular gland. 
द इन्फ्रोलैटल सर्फेस मीन्स दिस सर्फेस इन्फ्रोलैटल सर्फेस इज रिलेटेड टू इफ यू गो फ्रॉम सुपरफिशियल टू डीप दिस इन्फ्रोलैटल सर्फेस फर्स्ट इज रिलेटेड टू द स्किन okay it is related to the skin then deep to skin comes the superficial fascia which contain the fibro fatty tissue and within this superficial fascia this stapel line they indicate the muscle called as platysma which is subcutaneous muscle okay so it is then covered by the platysma within the superficial fascia that means this muscle is running within the superficial fascia the platysma then here is also the presence of the facial vein which is going to the uh, form the common facial vein in the neck okay so this will uh, the facial vein bringing the blood from the face okay hmm? and then after winding round the body of the mandible at its base or lower border okay then it will go hmm, towards the neck where it will form the common facial vein okay it will form along with the anterior division of the retromandibular vein okay uh, uh, this after this uh, facial vein here into the submandibular space okay then there is a branch of the facial nerve cervical branch that is uh, the facial nerve is a cutaneous i mean it sends the muscular branches to the face which will supply the muscle of the face and the lowest branch of this facial nerve is the cervical branch of the facial nerve which will go down okay towards the neck where to supply the platysma muscle so that nerve is also in relation on its infrolateral surface so these are the relation of the infro lateral surface let us come to the relation of the lateral surface we will see now this is the lateral surface okay which is in relation to the bone so let us see the relation of the lateral surface lateral surface is related anteriorly means in its anterior part okay in its anterior part it is related to the body of the mandible as it is shown here it is related to the body of the mandible below the mylohyoid muscle below the mylohyoid line okay to the body of where the mylohyoid muscle is attached posteriorly but posteriorly that means in posterior part we after crossing the posterior border of the mylohyoid muscle here that portion of the gland okay that portion of the gland the medial pterygoid it is related to the medial pterygoid here here will come the medial very close to the angle of the mandible here okay on the uh, medial surface of the ramus and the angle of the mandible okay inner surface there will be the mylo i mean say the medial pterygoid muscle is attached and then it will come in relation to this lateral surface will come in relation to that of the mylo i mean say the medial pterygoid muscles okay okay and the facial artery and we have seen that the facial artery runs okay winding round okay this uh, mylohyoid muscle and lying on the lateral surface of this uh, the submandibular gland so the facial now will form a cow here okay while it is coming from the neck from external carotid artery it will lie on to the surface of the medial pterygoid on the lateral surface it is in relation to the posterior part of the the submandibular gland and then it will ascend into the face okay it will so the facial artery is related okay in the posterior part anterior part we have learned that it is the mandible body of the mandible below the mylohyoid line but in posterior part it is related um, laterally to that of the medial pterygoid and then the facial artery is related on the lateral surface in the posterior most part let us come to see the relation of medial part okay this is the medial part and this is related to that of the mylohyoid muscle see this medial okay anteriorly it is related to that of the mylohyoid muscle on the medial surface okay and then in its posterior part after the margin of the mylohyoid posterior margin then this posterior part of the superficial part of the gland it lies on the 
hyoglossus muscle okay it lies on the hyoglossus muscle i will show you this the relation of the medial surface with the help of this diagram let us come to the orientation of this diagram first this is the tongue here covered by the mucous membrane so i have shown it in the pink color this is the branch i mean say the body of the mandible with the incisor teeth cut very close to that of the i mean to say lateral side the section is not from median plane it is laterally so as to expose the hyoglossus muscle also okay which is taking origin from the greater cornua this is the hyoid bone and this is the body and this is the greater cornua of the hyoid bone from where this muscle is taking origin which is running upwards and forwards to go into the substance of the tongue and this muscle quadrilateral muscle is called as the hyoglossus muscle let me name it here this muscle is the hyoglossus muscle okay and this is the dorsal surface of the tongue covered by still covered by the mucous membrane okay this is the cross section from the body of the mandible and then this is the genial tubercle upper genial and the lower genial tubercle is there the lower genial tubercle will send a muscle going to the hyoid bone geniohyoid so this muscle is the geniohyoid muscle okay and then from the upper genial tubercle a fanciered muscle will go backward a strong muscle and this muscle is called as geniglossus because it is going into the tongue so it is called from genial tubercle to that of the tongue so geniglossus muscle is here which is forming the main mass of the tongue other end of which is attached also to that of the hyoid bone but it is going inside the tongue right then this is the steloid process steloid i have just written in short steloid process and from the tip of the steloid process then these two muscles are shown the third one is stylohyoid is not shown this muscle is the styloglossus styloglossus why because it is going to the tongue from steloid process so it is called as the styloglossus this muscle again from steloid process going to that of the pharynx and this is called as the stylopharyngeal or stylopharyngeal muscle because it is going to the pharynx to form the wall of the pharynx so this is styloglossus stylopharyngeus muscle is there so you have seen almost all the muscle but then this will also show the presence of the nerves this nerve is here going in a r shaped manner lying superficial to this hyoglossus muscle crossing to this muscle is styloglossus and then it lies on superficial surface of the hyoglossus muscle and then it ultimately goes to the supply to the tongue okay the mucous membrane all this mucous membrane anterior to third of the tongue is supplied by this nerve and this nerve is called as lingual nerve this is the lingual nerve branch of the mandibular nerves right so this is sensory nerve which is containing the fibers for the anterior two third of the tongue which lies here on to the upper portion of the hyoglossus hanging from this lingual nerve with its two root is this ganglion and it is a parasympathetic ganglion and this ganglion is called as submandibular some mandibular ganglion a parasympathetic ganglion okay so this is some mandibular ganglion and just deep to the some mandibular ganglion this is the deep part of the gland we are learning just now the superficial but let me tell you this is the deep part of the some mandibular gland okay sub mandibular gland so this is the deep part of some and from this deep part and its anterior end there extends a duct and this duct is called as the submandibular duct which will carry the secretion from both superficial and deep part and ultimately this will come to lie here deep to that of an another gland which is located here this is called as sublingual gland it is called as sublingual okay sublingual gland 
and then it will open here on the under surface of the tongue the duct and will pour the saliva here okay so this is the <coughs> sublingual and this is deep part of the submandibular gland the nerve which is coming here this nerve and this is the glossopharyngeal nerve glossopharyngeal nerve which is sensory for the posterior one third as well as motor also okay and then the other nerve is here it is this is called as the uh, nerve which is called as the hypoglossal nerve and this hypoglossal nerve will supply the motor fibers to the muscles of the tongue okay let us come to the relations of the medial surface of the submandibular gland see here in this so this was the medial surface and if you see the medial surface in this diagram first it will be in relation to that of the mylohyoid muscle as it is here in relation to the mylohyoid muscle and then its part which is present beyond the margin of the posterior margin of mylohyoid this will come in relation with many other structure say for example hyoglossus muscle so now we are on the relations of the medial surface of the submandibular gland and we will use this diagram to show you the medial surface relation now from in this we have already detached the mylohyoid muscle is gone so the superficial gland is also gone but this is the bed for the relationship of the medial surface of the submandibular gland so medial surface of the submandibular as i shown you just now it will be related to the mylohyoid muscle okay in most of it part the medial surface is related to the mylohyoid muscle and then in the posterior part this surface superficial part of the submandibular gland will be related to that of the hyoglossus muscle okay this is this part it will be related to the hyoglossus muscle on mylohyoid muscle itself it will be also related to the mylohyoid nerves and vessels okay which is uh, very close to the mandible very close to the mandible okay the medial surface of the mandible okay on the hyoglossus okay when this superficial part its medial surface will lie on the hyoglossus in this area it is uh, related to the lingual nerve see this this is the lingual nerve and it will be related to the lingual nerve it will be related okay more anteriorly to this submandibular ganglion ganglion which is hanging from that of the lingual nerve okay then it may will be also related to the hypoglossal nerve lower down it will be related to the hypoglossal nerve okay now if we go further and if the gland is extending more posteriorly here beyond the posterior margin of the mylohyoid muscle then further posteriorly this is the area where the medial surface of the superficial part of the submandibular gland will be related okay and these are the styloglossus muscle and then it will be related to the stylopharyngeus muscle and the middle constrictor see this here this muscle which i have drawn here is the middle constrictor muscle is here to this structure it will be related okay and this will be also related along with the hypoglossal nerve to that this loop of the lingual artery so these are the various structure which are shown in this diagram they are the relation of the medial surface of the uh, this superficial part of the submandibular gland okay submandibular gland let us now come to the deep part okay and we have seen that the deep part is situated just after going round this free margin of the mylohyoid muscle this is the deep part which is situated on the between the mylohyoid and that of the hyoglossus muscle yes see this it is resting deep part is resting on to the hyoglossal muscle so this part the deep part is a, a small part as compared to that of the superficial part okay and it completely lies on to the hyoglossus muscle okay and and this is its location is between 
the this is the lingual nerve and submandibular ganglion above and the hypoglossal nerve below so between the two important structure lingual nerve submandibular ganglion which are related superiorly above and that the hypo hypoglossus uh, i mean not hypo hypoglossal nerve below okay below hypoglossal nerve motor nerve to the tongue muscle is the hypoglossal now from the anterior end of the deep part the duct will start okay and this is called as the submandibular duct okay and this will go first will go upwards okay and forward and then it will be lying deep to the the lingual nerve then it will come forward and then above the lingual nerve and will form a loop it will cross to the lateral surface of the lingual nerve to open okay to open into the floor okay now so this is the loop structure or relationship between the lingual nerve and to that of the duct that is called as the uh, submandibular duct okay it is called as submandibular gland now this deep part it lies between the as i said mylohyde muscle and the hyoglossus muscle imagine the mylohyde muscle like this and then this is lying on to the hyoglossus muscle let us come to the uh, other part okay and let's see that come to the submandibular duct which is also called as wharton's duct now anto posteriorly between mylohyde and hyoglossus this now is line now it is about 5 cm in length we are talking about this duct right from here to here this is about 5 cm the beginning it is lying between the mylohyde and the hyoglossus and then it will lie on the genioglossus muscle okay now it runs between sublingual gland okay and the genioglossus muscle see here this is the genioglossus muscle and this is the sublingual gland in between the two this duct will be passing okay it will the duct will be to open into the sublingual papilla and the sublingual papilla is situated just below the tongue okay here it is called a sublingual a, a mount like structure or a raised structure in which this duct will open in this papilla okay on the ventral surface so the duct is common for superficial and the deep part all the saliva from this submandibular gland thus will open into the sublingual papilla okay so this was the description and relation of superficial and deep part of the submandibular gland let us come to the blood supply the blood supply is by the facial artery which is just lies on its medial surface posterior part while it is just lying Uh, between the masseter i'm uh, sorry not masseter between the medial pterygoid and the gland and then this while it is in relation it will give many smight small branches which will supply the sublingual gland okay some mandibular gland some mandibular gland and the venous drainage is again to that of the common facial vein no supply the no supply is the sensory nerve of the gland will be coming from the lingual nerve both for submandibular and sublingual gland okay this is the from the lingual nerve okay the next video is on this uh, nerve supply of the gland itself in a detail okay the secretomotor that means stimulation of these fibers will lead to the secretion from submandibular gland and this will come from the submandibular ganglion the post ganglionic fibers taking origin from submandibular ganglion will supply the secretomotor fibers to both superficial and deep part of the submandibular gland sympathetic fibers which are vasoconstrictor they will come from the uh, facial artery okay as from a plexus around the and since facial artery is in close relation to its medial surface posteriorly this will send the fibers sympathetic fiber vaso constrictor fibers to the gland okay now this lymphatic is very 
the close to this submandibular gland there is the presence of many lymph nodes and they form a group what is called a submandibular group of the lymph node and they are lying on the surface of the submandibular mostly into the infralateral surface there are so many lymph nodes okay which uh, are there which are embedded within the substance of the submandibular gland are on the superficial surface that is infralateral surface in the applied anatomy of the submandibular gland okay this is the common site for formation of the stone within the duct the duct that is submandibular duct uh, is the common site where the stones are formed why stones are formed in the submandibular duct reason are many number 1 is because the secretion of the submandibular gland is thick because it also contain the mucus viscid secretion along with the watery uh, salivary secretion which is the serous secretion okay so the secretion is thick and second is that the duct gives rise to the formation of the stone within the duct because the duct is going for in its first part anti gravity upwards and forward and then it has a tortuous course and thus the secretion is not very easy it has to go up and then have form a loop around the this lingual nerve and then open so there is a tortuous course and the this is and the the secretion is thick and that is the region why it is the common site for the formation of the stone okay what are called as calculi stones are called as calculi now the second applied importance in relation to this gland is okay removal of submandibular lymph node as i said the submandibular lymph node they are on the uh, infralateral surface of the uh, gland that means in relation to the deep cervical fascia which is attached to the base of the mandible or inferior border and deep to i mean say it is Uh, covered by the skin superficial fascia and platysma this surface and this lymph nodes are embedded within the substance okay superficially of course not deep uh, within the they are touching to the substance and may to some extent may lie within the substance on the suprolateral surface when the cancer is there in the area to which this submandibular group of the lymph nodes are draining then this lymph node will become enlarged they will start penetrating inside the substance of the gland they will fuse with each other okay in later stage and for that the surgeon has to remove this sub mandibular group of the lymph node in the cancer okay in the area of the drainage so while he is trying to remove this lymph node it may be difficult to remove because they are have fused with each other and they have gone inside the substance of the submandibular gland so in that case the submandibular gland is also removed along with this lymph node otherwise it is not possible to remove the nodes alone okay mm, singly we cannot and leaving behind the submandibular gland so the gland is also sacrificed for removal of this gland now this completes the anatomy of the submandibular gland thank you very much for watching this video